Hey everybody, this is Daniel of the Daniel Troutman Show. This show is gonna be really short. It's some really bad weather here in Atlanta with the snow, it's blizzards going on, 12 inches of snow. It is absolutely, I'm just kidding y'all, it's not that bad. Uh, road, roads were cleared yesterday and people are staying at home with buying all the bread and the ramen noodles and the milk from the grocery stores. But we are surviving here in Atlanta. Uh, snow is a once a year thing for us. And don't laugh at us. If you are not from the South and you laugh at the way we deal with the snow, just remember you cannot handle our heat down here and I don't like our heat either so um but as much as we laugh about that there's a lot that happened this week which is not a laughing matter so i want to touch on all those things i'm gonna do a little bit of a rapid fire show because so much happened i want to first talk about what republicans have done this week we'll talk about the russia report i want to talk also about um the Facebook live beating that happened. So uh, Republicans this week have decided that now that they have power, they're gonna make sure they take care of the working class concerns of people. They're going to address outsourcing of jobs, they're gonna address Wall Street being too powerful. No, I'm just kidding. They didn't do any of that at all. They, they went after an ethics organization. Um, they went after an independent group that's charged with making sure that Congress people hold themselves accountable and ethically. They decided they wanted to get rid of that because that, of course, is the Republican way. Um, but thanks to public outcry, crew, and or a watchdog organization, and also a tweet from President-elect Trump, they stopped going after that. So after that minor significant embarrassment, um, they are trying to repeal Obamacare. Now, let me just touch on this real quick. I um, like a few parts of the Affordable Care Plan. I like the fact that people with pre-existing conditions get covered. I like the facts that if you are 26 and under, you get to stay on your parents' insurance. I like that. Um, I don't like the, in the individual mandate. Um, I don't like the premiums that people have to pay just for catastrophic coverage. <clears throat> I also don't like the way that people's premiums have skyrocketed. Now, that's not because of the Affordable Care Act. That was happening even before it. But it's just something that I don't like that's still happening. I would prefer a universal health care plan where people have coverage all, period. You have it regardless of where you work. Um, and I think it will really help drive down costs, including prescriptions. But if I'm wrong, let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. So with that being said, um, Republicans are still pushing with their repeal plan. Now they're talking about delaying it so it doesn't hit immediately, which I'm pretty sure is to make sure they don't lose any seats in the 2018 congressional elections. Um, but I find it interesting that Obama passed the Affordable Care Act. He signed it into law March 23rd, 2010. For six years now, Republicans have no viable replacement. None. As somebody said on Facebook, uh, well, it was on Twitter first, you could have written Hamilton in that amount of time. You could have written... Uh, an award-winning play and they still don't have a replacement because I don't know I'd love to ask them why they don't have a viable option six years later um, but they don't so we need to be keeping our eyes on that I am concerned about those with pre-existing conditions I'm concerned about those 26 and under I'm concerned about those 22 million who will be uninsured if that plan is repealed and the effect on jobs and on the deficit as well well Republicans pretend like they care about that but when they get in power they don't care about that at all um let's talk about lastly the holman rule so apparently republicans also are trying to pass a measure so that it would allow them to basically target specific federal employees and programs that they don't want to fund now this happened because of a specific waste program it was like 80 million dollars going toward like horses and they didn't want to be able to fund that anymore. So a man named Holman decided to try to institute a rule where they could target those things and it could be done by any member of Congress. I would specifically, I think it's the House as well. So the concern about that is they can use that to drive federal employees' wages down to a dollar. So you can imagine in a Trump administration where people have already been hired to be in charge of the very agencies that they oppose, that this could be used to target you know, the uh, wage increase that Obama um, put into law for federal employees. This could be targeted, for example, something, a program that, they, that, that the Environmental Protection Agency is trying to go and, and do. It could be targeted to cut that. So this could be used in a retaliatory measure, and I'm concerned about that. Um, and I'm going to include all of the links to everything in the description uh, near the video on Facebook so that you can see it for yourself. And if you have any thoughts about it, you can talk about it with me.
Um, so let's talk about Russia, because apparently everybody's talking about Russia, but not everybody's doing it intelligently. So the U.S. intelligence agencies came out with a report this week saying that when it comes to Russia, they were in, um, activating an influence campaign so that they could hurt the chances of Hillary and increase the chances of Trump. Well, we've been asking for data on this so that we could actually have proof of it, and they released a report, and it was full of evidence. It had data, it had dates, it had times, it, no, it did, not just kidding. It didn't have any of that. It had the assertions that the US intelligence agencies are making, but it didn't have the data because that data is classified. So the assertions are declassified, the evidence is classified, and I still don't believe it. Um, when you read it, because I read all 25 pages of this report, it's just not convincing enough for me to be honest. And specifically, this is why the mainstream media really can't be trusted with the Russia reporting. Because page six of the report says, basically a paraphrase, that the report was only focused on the motivations and the actions of foreign actors, specifically the Russians, RT, Goods for 2.0, according to them. But it was not focused on whether these things had an actual effect on US politics or the election. So the report wasn't even, didn't even have a, a voice on whether this actually affected our election. In fact, they said specifically it did not affect vote tallying. So the question is, why is everybody going around saying Russia hacked the election? I don't even know what that term means. I think that's a vacuous term meant to instill fear. But what it shows is that the mainstream media is still not doing their jobs, or they are doing their jobs, and they're reading propaganda scripts, but they are not doing the job we want, which is to dig into it and give us the truth and tell us the truth. As you saw this week from the Wall Street Journal editor, he's not gonna call Trump lies lies because they'd be prescribing something onto Trump. He's instead just gonna put the lies next to the truth and say, hey, you decide because they don't believe in doing their jobs, I guess. So um, I'm going to include a link to that. I encourage you, if you have a few minutes, read the report for yourself. I'm not saying that Russia didn't play a part in all this. That's not what I'm saying, folks. What I'm saying is we need to demand evidence from our government. We need to be skeptical first. We do not need to implicitly believe anything they say because these are the same organizations that told us that Iraq was correct. Same organizations that have organized death squads over overseas. I just don't buy it until I have credible evidence so that I can believe it. Um, I wanna mention something about this Facebook Live beating that happened. Four black kids uh, beat up um, a young white man who had mental challenges, tortured him for 48 hours, um, like cut his hair, did, did all different things so that are horrific and sick and then Facebook Live did. And so I wanna to touch on something here because there's been some racial discussions about it and I wanna just add a little bit of, of clarity here. So the first thing is this, what they did was sick and they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. It is not acceptable, it is not okay at all. With that being said, I've noticed some people bringing up the attack that happened on the black football player um, that was done by his white teammates and how they uh, penetrated him with a coat hanger in his anus. Uh, they beat him up. They made him say racial slurs. And he was also mentally challenged as well and how none of those people got jail time. So before, I think first, we gotta make sure that we don't forget the victims in these scenarios. It's really easy to get into racial discussions and forget that there are real victims with real families that we cannot forget. But with that being said, I think we should watch to see what is the process of justice, um, of legality, of legal punishments that happens here. Because if you see four black people get jail time for what they did, but you see another crime where people don't get jail time, then it is legitimate to ask what's going on. Now, different states have different laws, different different states have different ways of handling the law. No one, no two states are the same. No two cities are the same. So we have to ask a lot of questions before we make judgment leaps. But I do think it, there is value in asking whether justice will be served when it's different people doing different things. But let us not forget the horrific nature of these crimes and let us also not put that to the side so that we can have arguments about it. And let's stop blaming Black Lives Matter. To say this is a BLM kidnapping 
It's pathetic. It's libel. And you're lucky you don't get sued by them because that is not something that Black Lives Matter endorses. I know people part of the organization who care about people and simply want social and economic justice. This is not a means that they would uh, address it at all. So it is not okay to spread that hashtag, whatever it is. I'm not even gonna give a name to it because it's pathetic. So with everything going on in the news, I'm gonna continue to bring the, this information to you the best I can. I love having a conversation with you. So I appreciate having discussion with you. I wanna hear from you. What do you think about these stories? Is there something you read that you wanna to contribute to the dialogue to make this even better? This is a conversation and not just me talking. Conversation with you makes me better. And if the better I become, the better I can do for you. And we can keep this going back and forth. But I hope you enjoy the snow if you've gotten any. Enjoy time with your loved ones. This has been Daniel with the Daniel Trotman Show. And I will see you next time.